no nation had their king taking care of their nation the way God was taking care of his nation. And I don't care what we say, there ain't no headquarters, there ain't no, no, no denominations, there ain't no world council churches, there ain't no government, there ain't no system, there ain't no social system that can take care of God's people the way God can take care of his children. Amen. Brother, I'll just be honest with you. They, they had a God that could call water. Now, I don't know how big that rock is. Outside the fact that I believe I stood one day on the same rock Moses stood on. Matter of fact, I believe we're all standing on that same rock right here this morning. And that rock is Christ. But ever how large that rock is, God supernaturally moved that rock everywhere they went. Read the Bible. It followed them in the wilderness. Now, whether men had to pick that up, no, I don't believe they had to pick it up. But God had that rock there and one day Israel got thirsty. No plumbing. No pipes run. But all of a sudden, a man who believed in God and trusted God did what God said. And you know the story behind it. But I'll just tell you this much. He smote the rock. And God didn't ask him to speak to, smoke the rock. God asked him to speak to the rock. Boy, couldn't I preach a while because that's the same thing right here this morning. God, all you got to do is talk to him. Speak to the rock and see it. The Bible said it and it flowed forth what his water. Brother Bram said that same rock is here tonight, here this morning. His name is Jesus and the church can speak to him and out of him can come forth the water and provide what we have need of. Water flowed out of a rock. That fed two million. You imagine them taking them jugs up there and letting the water just run in there? Nobody had time to figure out how it was happening. They just had to know that God was keeping his word and providing for them. Who cares how God does stuff as long as he does it? Brother, we got to sit around and go over in the scientific realm. Forget science. Have faith. God can do anything. We keep wanting to go over there. Look, do you realize it don't even take faith to believe that picture right there? No, that's science. If we didn't have that picture, then it would require you to have faith to believe what that messenger said, that that light is here. The world without excuse, that's scientifically proven. That don't require faith. That's what Brother Bam said. Pictures don't require faith. That's scientifically proven. Faith believes when there is no science. Amen. I don't mean I don't like it. I'm glad God made science testify Amen. that what our prophet was saying was the truth. Amen. But we don't believe God by science. We believe God by faith. What pleases God is before he ever proves it, all he does is say it and you believe what he says. Amen. Come on now. Water flowed out of that rock. God was providing for him. Got on down a little further. We're hungry. We're hungry. Oh, if we had to and here God was every morning. Can you imagine? Every morning they wake up and out there laying on the ground is angel food. Amen. And it got to where the Bible said their soul loathed that light bread. You know what that word load mean? Hate it. Can you imagine having an indifference towards something God supernaturally was doing? raining bread down. I mean, they wasn't even growing it. They wake up and the land is filled with bread and God said, go out there and gather you an omer full. And they go out there and, you know, the omer full was the daily bread. Amen. Give us this day our Amen. right. Look, quit asking God to provide for the month. Just believe him for the day. Amen. Didn't he say it? feeds the barrel, feeds the birds, take care of this. But what we want is a big nest egg where we quit trusting God and trust our nest egg. Preach on, preacher. God wants you waking up every morning trusting him. Lord, today's another day. I'm dependent on you. I don't know what tomorrow he's going to bring. He says, don't even worry about tomorrow. What if you ain't here tomorrow? Do you realize by tomorrow morning, our whole lives can be disrupted. 
That's all right. One thing can happen can disrupt our whole lives. So I'm not living tomorrow. I'm living for the day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad I got breath this morning on Sunday morning to come to church and enjoy the blessings of God and the fellowship around the word of God. Whatever tomorrow takes care of, let tomorrow worry about itself. Half stuff we worry about don't happen anyways. God wants you to have faith, not worry. Not be stressed, just have faith. See if God won't take care of you. Put your trust in him. See if I, I'll just outsmart God here, he's providing for me. But I'll go out there and I'll gather two omers full. That way tomorrow I can sleep in, don't have to get up as early as everybody else. And guess what? When they got up and wrenched their hand over in that bucket, there's wiggle tails, worms growing in it. You don't outsmart God. Give us this day our daily bread. You didn't carry over yesterday's manna to the day. Every day his mercies is fresh and new every morning. Oh, I'm preaching on, amen. And every day God provided for them. Day after day God provided. Day after day God provided. Finally they started complaining, my God, it's hot out here, Moses. We could go back then. Could you imagine them people down there, slaves? Uh, making brick and mortar slaves to Egypt and then start complaining because the weather's a little warm out there in the desert. God said, all right. And he sent them a cloud by day and brought a shade over Israel. Amen. He's their provider. Amen. Nighttime, he shiver, get cold in them tents. In the desert, it gets cold. Cold, you know what God did? As their father king, he's got to be their provider. Why would God call a nation out of a nation and then not take care of them? What kind of God would he be? What kind of father would he be? What kind of husband of Israel would he be if he called them out and didn't provide for them? What kind of God, what kind of husband would we have this morning if he calls us out of Laodicea and then brings us down here in this message and don't take care of us? He's going to provide, but you've got to believe him. Put your faith in him and see if he won't provide for you because he ain't moving past your faith. Amen, Amen. Amen church. He even is bringing you here and providing the faith for a rapture right in this message Amen. for a body change, lays in these tapes. Right. See, it's right here, church. Ain't down the road, it's right here. Amen. What kind of God would he be? What kind of father king would he be? Now they say it's cold in the desert and here comes Papa God, husband to Israel, Jehovah, husband to Israel, and brings that fire over the camp. And just imagine a war, like the sun. So you ever got cold and you just step out in the sun, the sun rays hits you. It's incredible the difference between the shade and the, and the sun. That sun hits you. Ooh, man, this feels good. Yeah. You imagine that God like turn on the heat just over Israel. Other nations don't have that, but Israel's got a fire among them. Yeah. Oh, couldn't I preach a while? Amen. Got a cloud and a fire, and he's providing everything we have need of. Come on, church. He was providing it for Israel's father. And the prophet God said he was, he busied himself Amen. to take care and provide for him. He busied himself. A real man, that's a real son of God, busies himself to take care of his family. Amen.